like go back to the basics like the basics are really the things that yeah. will help you get better in the end on episode seven we had emmy easterly Emmy talks about the process of picking BC as her next home. The final decision kind of just came down to like, what would my younger self want? She gave us a framework that can instantly boost your confidence. So you okay. can always control your attitude, your concentration, and your effort. Finally, she left us with some great advice for anyone trying to play at the ACC level. Having like a clean first touch, passing accuracy, and then just being able to read the game. Alright, uh, Ben's Boots Pod. I don't even know what episode this is because I had like <laughs> my friend Jamie. I had we, we had a bunch of people that I just haven't posted yet. But uh, we have Emmy. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm really excited. <laughs> no, of course. I think that uh, I mean you're you're the first like woman player we've had yeah. yet, and so it's great to to kind of get that perspective. Mm -hmm. And I'm super excited to to hear what you have to say today. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess you can start off with just tell me like who you are and a little bit mm -hmm. about yourself, mm -hmm. where um, you played. Yeah. So I'm an 07. I play for FC Stars Blue ECNL. We practice out in Lancaster. Nice. Um, I live in Situate, and this is my first year at Milton. Um, I came here as a new junior, yeah. which was a little bit intimidating, but the transition's been really good so far. Nice, nice. Um, so I played at my public high school, just Situate High. Okay. Um, I had fun, but yeah. I definitely am enjoying Milton a lot. It's yeah, a lot. Yeah. It's a much better experience, I think. Like no, that's fair, yeah. A whole new caliber of, like, people, teachers, and then players yeah. in the ISL and stuff. I watched um, I watched uh, some of your highlights just to, like, kind of oh see God. who you are yeah. as a player. And uh, <laughs> you were just, like, bossing in that situation. Yeah. Was it kind of, like, I mean, how would you compare that level to, like, Milton? Is mm -hmm. it, like, a lot easier there? Or? Definitely. Um, I think the league we played in was called Patriot League. Okay. And it was kind of a mixed bag. Like, there are some players, like, some teams are really good. Yeah. Like, Hingham has been really good for a while because okay, nice, they have yeah. the real sisters who play at UCLA now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah. there's there's actually a lot of talent on the South Shore. Like, I think this year, three of the divisions were all South Shore towns. Oh, wow. So, like, Situate, Hanover, Norwell, Cohasset, like, a lot oh, of really wow. good talent. Um, Ooh, what do you think is the best out of those those towns um, like for soccer? I think Hanover and Norwell were in the final for, I think, the division that Situate's in. Okay. And those teams are really good. They have a couple commits. Um, and actually, the junior class is, like, really talented. Okay, nice, nice. So, I think Hanover is probably the top there. Um, but, yeah, playing at Situate was a lot of fun because even as a freshman, like, I was able to make an impact. Yeah, just, yeah. like, coming from a very competitive club environment and mm -hmm. then being able to bring that into, like, high school. No, for sure. And uh, just to kind of, like, reiterate what I said. So, you kind of started off at Stars, right? Is that kind of, like, your first club? or? Um, so, my first club was actually Galway. It's, like, 15 minutes down the okay. road. Okay. Oh, the Galway Rovers? Yep. Yeah, you know okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, I know that. Is. Yeah. Um, so, that's when, like, the Maple League was a thing. Oh, yeah. I used to play in that with Vallejo. Really? Okay, day, yeah, yeah, Vallejo. Um, and so, I started playing there when I was, like, seven, and they had this um, program called Junior Rovers, so it was, like, before you were actually on a club team. Okay. And so, I was playing in that when I was seven, and I was, like, all excited to, like, try out for, like, yeah. the U9 team. And, like, it was kind of a reach to start because that's, like, playing two years up. Mm -hmm. And so I tried out, and I didn't make it. And, oh, like, wow. I was, like, so upset. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. My dad talks about this all the time. Like, I had a conversation with him. I was, like, I'm done with soccer. Like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm quitting. And he's, like, are you sure you want to do that? Like, you're still, like, young, obviously. Mm -hmm. I was only seven. And I was, like, okay, fine. So I was, like, I'm going to go back to Junior Rovers, like, kill it. And yeah. so, like, that's exactly what I did. And then I tried out the next year. So I was eight, and I was trying out for the U9 team again, and then I ended up making, like, the U10 team. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up playing two years up, and I wow. was playing center back. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so yeah, it was... No. I mean, you play center back now for Milton, yeah, right? I yeah, I yeah. do. Um, so I guess I was always meant to be a center back. Right, but. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that kind of, like, your favorite position, you think, or...? Um, I'm not really sure, because for Stars, so actually, we've been playing a 4-3-3 for yeah. the past, like, two years at Stars, um, and I've been playing right back in that. Okay, yeah. But I played the six for, like... 
my whole career at NEFC. I played oh, at nice. NEFC. Oh, wait, so you're at NEFC as well. Okay, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went Galway, and then I moved to NEFC, yeah. and I played on, like, just the regional, like, South Shore region. And yeah. I had two coaches. One of them's an, an assistant at Columbia now. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. and I'm, like, really close with him. So he's kind of been, like, one of my mentors. Oh, nice. Um, And then my other coach is now the varsity coach for Situa High Girls. Wow, okay, so nice. So I know them very well. Yeah. And I was playing for the South Shore region, and then I moved to, like, the Central region, which is, like, where they consolidate all the talent, basically. Yeah. And they had this thing called IDP, which oh, yeah, was, like, yeah. they brought, like, they pooled girls from the different regions and brought them into one team. And then that yeah. ended up being a pre-DA team. Mm -hmm. But then the DA, like, dissolved, and then NEFC joined the GA. Okay. And yeah. so when the girls academy became a thing, that's when I moved to Stars. Yeah. So I went from girls academy to East. Did a lot of your your teammates from NFC kind of go to Stars as well, or? Um, I'm trying. One, two of them did. Oh, or okay. three actually. Okay. Um, one of them's committed to Louisville actually. Wow. So, yeah, wow. She's, no, that's yeah, yeah. She's a baller. Yeah. <laughs> she's still on my team. I've known her since we were like nine. So wow. we're really close. And then a goalkeeper and then another defender moved to Stars and they're still there. Okay. And so I know you kind of said this a while ago, but how like. You kind of like didn't make the team right mm -hmm. when you were younger, and like that kind of was like a fire for you, and it yeah. kind of fueled you your your work ethic and your determination. And I think it's crazy because like I mean, obviously those same values are with you today, right? Mm -hmm. And like those Definitely. have kind of helped you. And so I was gonna ask like, how have you seen those values kind of help you like nowadays? Yeah, I mean, recently actually I've kind of like had to work through some stuff at yeah. my club. Like, um, coming out of high school, obviously like it's not the same level as club. Yeah. So kind of that transition is always a little bit hard. Like you kind of have to brush off the dust. A for little sure. Bit. No, I know for sure. Yeah. So I kind of like had to reflect cause we just had a showcase in um, Florida. Okay. Nice. So we had, it was an ECNL showcase. We had three games and wow. like half my team is 25s. The other half is 26s. So yeah. it's like a big year for the 26s. Yeah, for sure. And like the majority of the 25s are committed. Mm -hmm. So obviously like we're playing in front of our college coaches. So yeah. there's like a little bit of a pressure there. Mm -hmm. But um, I definitely didn't play as well as I wanted to, so I kind of, like, we've had two weeks off, so, like, yeah. a lot of time of reflection. Yeah. Like, so since that tournament? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so my first practice back is supposed to be tomorrow. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm yeah, really yeah. looking forward to it, but we've had, like, we had individual Zooms with our club coach, and he's, like, awesome. Like, he's really invested in everyone's, like, personal nice. development and then development as a team. Nice, yeah. So I was able to have, like, honest conversations with him and be like, yeah, like, I'm ready to, like, get back. Like, I'm ready to work. Yeah. Obviously, like, now it's kind of preparing for college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's just another thing motivating me. So um, I know for, for guys, like, mm -hmm. MLS Next is, like, the kind of the yeah. main thing. So is ECNL kind of, like, the main thing for girls? Yeah, right? for girls. So basically there's, like, two kind of competing um, leagues, Girls yeah. Academy and ECNL. Yeah. Girls Academy is only, like, three years old, so they're kind of, like, new okay. to the scene. Yeah. And ECNL has been around for, like, yeah, for a, long a time. really yeah, long time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I know that, like, there's the ECNL boys, which is more new, but yeah. I'd say that ECNL girls, having played in both the girls' academy and ECNL, mm -hmm. ECNL is definitely the top league. Okay, so the most um, are most girls playing for like their high school league during the fall, and mm -hmm. then like okay, it's the trans so how was uh how was the transition from like Situate to Milton and like like soccer wise? Mm -hmm. I'm um, as Situate, it was really just like for fun. Like I could take like seven touches, and I played midfield, I played yeah, like the yeah. ten. So it was really just like about having fun and like being able to just like dribble at people, which yeah, like yeah. I don't really get to do in club because it's more like one and two touch, like yeah, yeah, it's playing yeah. simple. Um, but I actually went back this year and watched some of the Situate Varsity games and mm. the ball is just like in the air the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I see that a lot with like like us in high school. Soccer. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. There's definitely it's just like a whole different game. Yeah, high school. Um, to compared to club, but yeah. the quality of the ISL is like so much better than really than, okay. than public just like high public school. school. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's fair. I mean, I've definitely seen that as well. Like mm -hmm. with like, I used to go to Boston Latin, like Boston yeah. Latin soccer compared to Milton Academy. Yeah, that's a really big difference. And so, um, so obviously, I think a pretty big thing is you're committed to BC. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I heard there's a little story behind that, like how like you're committed, <laughs> to, like you're looking at BU and BC, yep. and like it was like a last minute decision or something yeah. like that. And so, yeah, can you kind of talk about yeah. that? So I think for girls, like, I don't think there's enough emphasis on the importance of ID camps. Okay. Because nice. for me, I went to a BC ID camp on the 23rd yeah. of September, and then I committed on October 9th. So wow. it was like a two week period in between yeah. them like really seeing me and then okay. me committing. Oh, so they haven't, they didn't really see you before that. Not really. Oh, okay. So yeah. they'd been to like showcases and I'd, and I'd email them, but yeah. I honestly wasn't really sure I wanted to go, like if I wanted to stay local or yeah. go somewhere else. Cause my sister goes to SMU in Dallas Okay, nice. and that's where I'm from. So like I've always kind of gravitated towards the South, but BC yeah. was just like the perfect fit. Nice. Um, nice. 
So I definitely think that like ID camps are a place where coaches can see you in like an environment where you're like going to really succeed yeah. or kind of just like blend in with the crowd. Cause yeah. like you can really just, um, separate yourself from everyone else there. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> um, whether it's through like communication, which is a big thing for me, yeah. like intensity, like I think that ID camps are just a really good opportunity to like show coaches like who you are as a player for and sure. that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I was looking at, I had an offer from BU and BC Okay, nice. and BU gave me like a lot more money than BC did, Yeah. but it kind of just came down to the conference, like BU's in the Patriot League, which is a really good conference yeah. and they're like at the top of that conference. Yeah. So that was kind of a factor, but like playing in the ACC, like that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. For sure. For and sure, I was yeah. like, if I really want to push myself to like see how far I can get with soccer and like yeah. my like biggest, my like greatest potential like yeah I knew that I wanted to play in like the most competitive conference in the country yeah I mean I feel like that's definitely been a big thing for me as well mm -hmm. but like putting yourself in the right environment yeah. and like where you're gonna be challenged mm -hmm. right where you're gonna have to face adversity that yeah. you're gonna ha have to overcome and so um I was gonna ask like during your your journey to get to where you are now mm -hmm. what uh other moments of what other setbacks have you had to kind of overcome I mean I obviously talked to like yeah. when you were younger but yeah. like <laughs> has there anything like any injuries maybe or um I've actually been very lucky with injuries okay, I nice. had a boot one time because I had like growth plate issues in my foot but that oh, was really? like a while ago okay my nice. sister and I actually had a boot at the same time which was oh really crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it was like the same issue but um it's a bad coincidence but. I know. <laughs> um because I actually played a lot of futsal growing up I actually oh, yeah. played for Safira okay yeah, yeah. yeah I know Safira yeah, 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 yeah um do you know Jenga you know that mm -hmm. okay yeah, I heard so, of that. yeah we like yeah. you to play for Jenga <laughs> okay um and then a lot of my friends also play for like flair okay yeah, yeah. um but that's that was like my really only big injury. But um, I've also broken my hand actually in Seattle. Um, my U15 year, we made it to the round of 16, which is like that's like the farthest we've gone in national yeah. playoffs because no one was really expecting anything because my team was like made up of just girls from all different clubs that year. Okay. Um, oh wait, wait, what do you mean by that? Like it was so, like a, yeah, my like coach, a super team kind of. That's actually they called it like the oh super, really? I'm not <laughs> even kidding. That's exactly what they called it. And um, my coach is a very good recruiter. Okay. So. There were three girls from NEFC, yeah. two girls from Select. Um, there's a girl from Aztec. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard about that club I in know, a while. I know, I yeah. know. She's really good, though. She's going to UNH. So, wow, okay, yeah. nice. Um, so he kind of just, like, would come to games and, like, like hand pick. We, he'd say, like, you guys are all hand picked for this team. Yeah, yeah. So we made it to um, the round of 16, and in the game that qualified us for that, mm -hmm. Um, I was playing right back and I was like shielding the ball from this girl and yeah. she just like two hands shoved me in the back, landed on me and I like fell on my hand and broke it. Oh no. Um, but I still had to play the next day. We were playing PDA. Who's like, so you still played after that? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I yeah. played, I had like, I had to get an x-ray that day. Wow. It hurt so bad. It was like so swollen, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, those are like the only two injuries I've had. So not really many setbacks from that. Yeah. Um, but I think a really big challenge for me was when I moved from NEFC to stars. Yeah. Because basically what happened was my coach at NEFC found out that I was going to stars trainings. Yeah. And so oh he cut no. my yeah, he was cut he? my playing time in half. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was we were going to Greensboro, North Carolina for like our first girls' academy showcase. Yep. And so I was playing like eighty, ninety minutes a game and he just like cut it in half. So I was kind of upset about that, but like yeah. I knew that the decision I was making was hard, but it was the right one for me because um stars has just like been very helpful yeah um, progressing me as a player for sure and I feel like that's kind of an underrated challenge is like yeah. like playing for a new a new team in mm -hmm. a new environment it's so hard to like kind of shift over definitely but like, I mean once you make that shift you you kind of get, get yeah. yourself into it and so I kind of want to touch a little bit more about your recruitment process because mm -hmm. uh I mean I feel like that's a pretty big thing and yeah. so um so was it just BC and BU that you're kind of looking at or? um yeah I had gone on a visit to Northeastern okay, over nice. the summer um and I met the girls I met the coach um and I think a really big thing is like finding a place where you fit and okay. like you can see yourself for the next yeah. four years because I met the girls and like it was kind of clicky which like I didn't really think would be beneficial for me as a player or like just the team in general yeah so team culture team chemistry is definitely very important yeah and I definitely found that with the BC girls like right after I committed I got like a bunch of follow requests from nice, the girls on the nice. team yeah, so yeah. that felt really good um and then I was also talking to UVM a little bit. Okay. They actually, so the day of my um, BC clinic, mm -hmm. we played mm, Middlesex, I think, okay. for Milton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the UVM coach was there. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. But I had to leave early to get to the BC clinic. Um, um, so it was really just those schools. And you guys win that game? 
No, we didn't. We lost. We <laughs> lost four two. That's actually that was our first game of the season. Oh. Okay. Um, but a lot of funny memories from that. There's like a hand handball in the box. One of our defenders picked up the oh ball in the God, box. No, but oh my God. It's, it was it was good. It was okay. Yeah. Um, and then I was also kind of talking. Um, like I said, my old coach from NEFC is a Columbia assistant. Yeah, yeah. So I did. I was invited to a clinic over the summer. Nice. Um, I played well, and I was talking to them, but they um. Girls in the class of 24, they already had three defenders recruited okay. that committed, so they weren't really looking for, like, my position anymore. Wait, so are you trying to – so did you commit to BC as, like, a center back or, like, a right back? Or yeah. As a, um, as like a right a, back? Yeah, as okay, a right okay, back okay, because nice, I think nice. they play in a 4-3-3. Yeah. Um, and that's probably, like, where I'm most effective. Mm. But for Stars right now, we're playing a 3-5-2, so yeah, my yeah. coach said I'll either play, like, wing back or the six. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, so, yeah, it was basically just down to BU and BC because those are where I got um, offers from. Mm-hmm. And BU gave me a deadline, um, but BC didn't. Okay. So I had to. I was actually in Dallas when I got my offer from BU. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they just called you and like, yeah. Like, I mean, like to. I talked on the. F- I actually did a lot of college calls um, in my car at Milton. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because they'd be like, "When are you free?" And then I just take them during like free periods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she offered me. Um, the coaching staff there was. It was a really hard decision. Yeah. With decisions, my parents have always, like, kind of advised me to make pros and cons lists. Okay. Like, I did that. I'm going to start doing that now. Yeah. Sorry, running. It, yeah. it works. Okay. Um, <laughs> I did that when I moved from NESC to Stars, and then when I switched from Situate to Milton, and then obviously BU and BC. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of just, I would definitely say that it was very helpful, just, like, seeing everything out on paper, like, getting it out of your head. Um, sure. It's very helpful. Um, but I think the final decision kind of just came down to, like, what would my younger self want? And nice. I was like, younger me would be like, go play in the ACC. Like yeah. you're never going to have the opportunity again. And right, like, yeah. you can really just push yourself to like, see how good of a soccer player you can be. For sure. No, no, you're so right. Just that, that's actually, that's a two, you made two great points, <laughs> like the pros and cons list. Yeah. And then also like, what would your younger self mm-hmm. want you to do here? Yeah. But, uh, so you talked about ID clinics and mm-hmm. like, do you have any tips for players who are trying to like do well at ID clinics? Yeah. Um, I think a really big part, of the recruiting process and just being like a player that stands out yeah. are like the things that don't necessarily require talent. Yeah. Like, um, my coach when I was younger said that there are like three things you can always control. Yeah. <laughs> Those are my dogs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was an acronym. It was ACE. So you okay. can always control your attitude, your concentration and your effort. Okay. Um, and that's just like, those are the things that like require no talent. It's really just like how you approach things. Like you can control like, how much you're talking, your communication on the field. Like if you lose the ball, like how quickly can you get it back? Like your work rate. And then just like having a positive attitude, like body language is a really big thing that coaches look at. Like when you're on the field, when you're on the bench, like coaches are always watching that. Okay. Yeah, for sure. It's like, Mm -hmm. if you lose the ball, don't like throw your hands up. Yeah. Just go, go and get it again. Yeah. And so, um, I know it's kind of hard to pinpoint what exact drills you did, but Mm -hmm. do you have any drills that, that maybe you did individually that kind of stood out that you think like, Oh, I could, I would kind of look back at this and I do this like, 10 times more or something. Yeah. Um, so my coach at Stars, um, when we were, are you 15 year, he was like, all that you guys really can do like right now is like ball on a wall. Okay. Like go back to the basics. Like the basics are really the things that yeah will help you get better in the end. For sure. And I think that some people look at like doing like ball on a wall, like, oh, that's boring or like yeah. that's too easy. But like those are like the fundament- fundamental things that like will really help you in the long run. Okay. So, like, sometimes I'll just go in my garage and do, like, ball on the wall for 20 minutes. And, like, in short, it might not seem like it's doing much, but, like, over, like, a long period of time, like, that's what's going to help you. And, like, when I go to the turf by myself, I, like, warm up, and then I always make sure I get 200 juggles with, like, a normal size 5 ball. Like, if I get, like, 180 and I drop it, like, I have to restart. Oh, my God, yeah, yeah. So, it's just, like, the repetition and, like, um, being, like, consistent with it that's, like really helpful okay and then i'll do just like little foot skill stuff just like to get my touches in okay nice. and then sometimes if i go with like a teammate we'll do like passing drills and stuff nice and so when you say a ball on the wall do you mean mm-hmm. just like like just hitting the ball against the wall or do you mean like like in the air and like getting touched like yeah kind of you can kind of like make it however you want it yeah, so what yeah, i do right. yeah what i do is i have like i'll have like a wall here and yeah. then there's one over here and so i'll hit it and then i'll open up and then play it against the other wall yeah and so I'll switch, like, right foot to left foot, left foot to right foot, yeah, yeah. right to right, left to left. Nice, nice. Um, and then you can also do, like, playing it and then turning, like, all the way. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it can be kind of adjusted to, like, your position. So, like, yep. if you're a midfielder, obviously, like, you're facing up in the midfield. Like, right, taking yeah. your looks is really important. Like, scanning is for yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. For sure, yeah. Definitely. 
Uh, yeah. And so, um, do you have any like mentors that you think kind of stuck out throughout your life and kind of really helps you to get to where you are now? Um, definitely my dad. Okay, he nice. actually played Division Two soccer in Miami. Oh, nice. oh okay. Nice, yeah, nice, he nice. played at Bear University. Yeah. Um, yeah. But obviously his recruiting process was a lot different. Like back yeah. then, it was all really just word of mouth. Mm -hmm. But now that's yeah, crazy to think. I know. How, like now, it's yeah. It's so different now. Yeah, like we yeah. can email coaches. We can talk to right, coaches. Right. Yeah. Call yeah. them. He didn't really do that, but um, so he kind of has that perspective, and he actually played right back in college. Oh wow. Okay. So, yeah. So he's kind of teaching you some exactly, things. About how, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so nice. he has a lot of wisdom about that, and he still plays today. So okay. Nice. I hope that like when I'm older, I can. Yeah, yeah, playing. in like a four, like under forties league or something oh, yeah, like that. Yeah, literally called like over the hill soccer. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, he loves it. Um, and so we were kind of my whole family's played soccer. My mom played in high school. Nice. My sister played at NEFC, like NPL, DPL. Yeah. And then my brother plays now at Mass City. He's eleven. So. Wow. So the whole family yeah. kind of just played yep. soccer. And so, I know what's like one thing that he said that kind of like you, mm -hmm. you stay that like, stuck with you for like. Um, for your whole life, I guess. He's always, like, in soccer and then also just, like, in the world. He's also just told me, like, you're, like, a high-value person. You're a high-value player. So kind of that idea of, like, self-belief. Yeah. And, like, having, like, internal confidence is really important. Okay, and I think for sure. as, like, we get older, the game of soccer becomes a lot more mental. Yeah. So just having the ability to be, like, confident in your ability yeah. and, like, in yourself is really important. And that's kind of what he's always said to me. And do you have any tips for, like, players who maybe struggle with confidence? Um... Yeah, you can take a minute to think about this one if you need. <laughs> okay. Right. Struggle with confidence. That's a really good question. Um, I'd say that, like, the best way to be confident is just preparation. Okay, yeah. Like, if you know that you've put the work in and, like, you know that you've been doing things on your own that, like, maybe your club teammates or your high school teammates haven't been doing, like, yeah. you can go into a game being, like, I'm prepared for this. Like, I know that I've put preparation. And for then, sure. like... That kind of takes away the, like, uncertainty of, like, oh, like, am I really ready to play right now? Yeah. Like, you'll know that you've put in the work. You've done, you've done like, the hard work. You've put the time in. So, you're ready for the game. <laughs> for sure. No, no, that's great. Just preparation. Yeah. Yeah, I know. For sure. Um, And so, you kind of talked about how, like, you go to the field with your friend and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, what other off-season training do you do that, like, Yeah, so, I was talking about this earlier. But yeah. yesterday, I actually started um, this kind of small-sided training in oh, Pembroke. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a woman named Allison Foley. She's like a youth national team scout and she was actually the head coach at BC for like 21 years. Wow. Women's side. So okay. she's very experienced. She's an awesome coach. And she also has, um, her own like kind of recruiting thing. Mm -hmm. It's called like top 100. I've played in okay. it twice and it's over the summer and it's basically just like three games. There's like six teams and mm -hmm. there's like 20 girls on each team. So it's like a lot of girls playing good yeah. competition and then like local colleges are just like line the sidelines wow. so like good exposure she really knows what she's doing and so i should probably get her on in the podcast then yeah she would probably love that <laughs> yeah yeah um so she does these it's called fully athletic advising okay and she does these like small-sided trainings um i went with my friend who plays at nefc last night mm -hmm. and um it's just an hour it's every wednesday and saturday yeah so you kind of like come as you can and we started um with just like a dynamic warm-up and then we did a lot of band work nice. which is really important for girls like Injury prevention is very important. No, for sure, for yeah. sure, yeah. Because I, I broke my leg and uh, oh my gosh, like yeah, my like having strong glutes is so important. Mm -hmm. And so like just doing like like clamshells and yeah, all those exactly. basic things are super important. Yeah, gotta build the hamstrings and knees, especially yeah. for girls. The knees are very important. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, and then it's just like very high intensity. Mm -hmm. The girls like work hard. Like it's it's just like a good environment. Like kind of like you said earlier, like putting yourself in an environment that's like, yep. competitive and like beneficial is very important. For sure, and uh. I guess we're kind of wrapping up here, but uh, so I have two questions. So, mm -hmm. what's the best piece of advice you've received, and mm -hmm. what do you think uh is the a piece of advice you want to leave people who are watching with? Mm -hmm. I'll start with the advice that I would give people. I okay, okay, yeah. For girls going through the recruiting process, I kind of struggled with this, but like, you can't compare your process to anybody else. Nice, yeah. Um, it can be very easy to do that, especially as girls. Like, I feel like we've kind of grown up in like a a world where like we're we always compare ourselves to each other for sure like whether for it's sure, like social yeah. media our friends girls who are older than us totally but like totally. especially the recruiting process like this is your experience it's your next four years of college like it's not your parents it's not your friends like you can't compare the schools you're talking to you can't compare the amount of emails you've gotten the amount of calls you've gotten because you're your own player like everyone has their own thing that they contribute to the team and so you really just cannot compare yourself to anybody else like it's your process so just focus on yourself Wow, that um. is so good. Yeah, no, that's really, really good. And so um, I guess what's the best piece of advice that you've received? 
Um, that's a hard one. I had to think. No, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> take your time. Take your time. Um, I feel like it's definitely come from my dad, just because mm-hmm. he's like, kind of like we talked about earlier. Yeah. He's just always been my mentor. Nice. Um, the best piece of advice I've gotten. I don't know why I can't think. No, of no, anything. it's all good. It's all good. Um. Yeah, I can do the next question. Then okay, yeah, come I can back think to about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so the next question would just be like, what's next for you? What are you looking forward to mm-hmm. right now? And like in the soccer world. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to our spring season, our spring ECNL season. Yeah. Um, because at nationals, the way that it works is like in every region. So like I play in the Northeast region. The three teams that finish like top of the table go to Champions League. Oh, so that's like okay. So it's called the Champions League. Champions League, yeah. League, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always want to make Champions League. Yeah. And so last year we were fourth on the table. So we made North American Cup, which is kind of like the second tier. Okay. So it's kind of like our time to like redeem ourselves. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Make a statement in our first game. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. And I'm actually really looking forward to February because – this is kind of when we're getting back to training and like mm. my coach has been very transparent with us. He's been like, this is going to be like a hard month. Oh, okay. So I think everyone's kind of excited just like to get back to work. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking forward to. No, for sure. And uh, I mean, I don't know if I talked about this earlier, but I mean, I don't think you're like the biggest player. No. Right. And so um, <laughs> how have you kind of had to cope with that and yeah. deal with maybe not being mm-hmm. the most physical presence on the yeah. field? Um, so I'm definitely short and I'm also <laughs> not the fastest on my team, mm-hmm. but um. I'm very good at reading the game, and I think I have to be. I've always been told that, like, my dad, my coaches, just, like, being able to scan and kind of, like, read when, like, a center back's playing. It's, like, they're wide forward and kind of being able to, like, step in front. Because, like, the best defense is preventing your player from getting the ball. If they can't get the ball, they can't do anything. So just having, like, a high soccer IQ and being able to be, like, okay, like, the ball's going to be here next and just thinking, like, a couple steps ahead. And then um, I've also just, like, with playing futsal and, like, focusing on like ball on the wall and like foot skills um I really focus on being like technically sound yeah because like that's something that I can control on my own and like the tactical stuff can come from team training for sure but just having like a clean first touch passing accuracy and then just being able to read the game nice no I, I love all that yeah. and um you have anything else you want to say and because um for advice I guess I've always just been told to like believe in myself believe okay. in my ability yeah and sometimes like even like this past month after Florida, I've kind of just had to like be like, okay, I know that I'm a good player. Like yeah. I know how good I can be and how I can contribute to a team. Mm-hmm. So like in the moments where you're down, just like knowing that you are you are a good player and you can make an impact. For sure. Yeah. Emmy, thank you so much for yeah. being on the podcast. Thank you for Peace. having me. Yeah. <laughs>